I want to thank everybody that is here to listen to what you have to say. Um, in a special way, I want to thank my colleague, the Honorable Commissioner for Tertiary Education, Science and Technology, and uh, our great ally in the education family, the CEO of IDK. Um, I want to welcome the press and everybody, our team here, working to make sure that our conference <laughs> succeeds. Um, the education family working with IDK came up to think outside the box, to think about how we are going to make a difference in the education sector. We all know that the COVID-19 pandemic took everybody on our ways. Nobody was ready for this. Nobody saw it coming. And suddenly, schools were shut down. The economy was at a standstill. Our children were locked up at home. The teachers, everybody was gone from the school. March 24th, all the schools in Anambra State were shut down. Even though the Ministry of Basic Education actually rose up to the challenge and started the teaching on air program, it was a kind of trial and error. You know, we, many of us uh, teachers started to teach the students, uh, if you like, in quotes, online, using voice notes, using WhatsApp messages, using a whole lot of things. But it was a huge challenge for us. Nobody had the right answers. And therefore, we came together and said, if everything can wait, education cannot wait. Things have changed in the way education is seen, perceived, or handled. The new normal, whereby you find out that you will not see your students, but you have to teach them. Where you see that there has to be what you call blended teaching or blended learning, if anything can happen. Next week, we are starting schools, resuming schools uh, for SS3 students, but other students will still be at home. And then we said, why don't we bring together educators, critical stakeholders, community members, e-ways, um, our um, global partners, our friends, our colleagues, everybody, the youths, students. Why don't we put together a conference that will be visual? Well, how can, well let's come together and think of bringing everybody together to think about what are we going to do in Anambra State? How are we going to meet up with the challenges of the new normal? What actually is new normal? How are we going to handle it? What are the challenges we may have? How have we been treating COVID-19 uh, education during the COVID-19 pandemic? How are we going to make sure that, like Chief Dr. Willow Biano will say, no child is left behind? How are we going to ensure that we are going to carry everybody along and do not leave every, any person uh, from participating in education? What are we going to do about the children who we know, some of them, people we call beyond the end of the road, who may not have access to, say, television, who may not have access to data, who may not have access to iPads, mobile phones, Android phones, and so on and so forth? How are we, what are we going to do as a state to ensure that these children are not left behind. What are we going to do about our teachers? Are we still going to let our teachers to be the kind of, if you in quotes, illiterate teachers? Teachers who will just do academic, a word in that, a way fair, like I always say that. Who will not, who know nothing about uh, technology? Are we still going to have that kind of teachers? What kind of training do we need to give to our teachers to ensure that they participate in the you know, a global teaching and meet global competitiveness. How are we going to make Umuapu Kwande and Ambra to be globally competitive? These are questions that we keep asking ourselves. And in the education family, we said we cannot answer those questions alone. We need to bring people together to come and tell us what they think. We need to bring together who are more knowledgeable, perhaps, who are perhaps um, have broader perspectives, who can also think outside the box, 
and ensure that uh, they pro we produce some answers to some of the critical questions and challenges. So that's why we have the conference, the new normal, post-COVID education in a number of states. And that's why we think that first of all, August is the day that everybody must have to key in and contribute <coughs> to making sure that we actually will create a new and more vibrant education system in Anambra State, irrespective of the global pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Commissioner, for that wonderful speech. And we we'll look forward to the Commissioner for Tertiary Education to give us our own view. Thank you very much, Honorable Commissioner for Tertiary Education. Um, I welcome you all. Uh, you have heard what my sister in basic education has said. She has said it all. But in addition to this, I would like to add that technology is the way to go. Technology is the future. As you know, science and technology is under my portfolio. And like my sister said, we do not want our teachers to be lazy. We don't want them to go to sleep and have nothing to do. And so this conference is a wake up call. It's an opportunity for our teachers in Nigeria to have access to teachers all over the world to know about best practices, to be able to imbibe best practices. It's also a platform where they can have a cross fertilization of ideas. We can learn, our teachers can learn from teachers everywhere else. It's also a platform for problem solving. So you might find that people in Europe or other parts of Nigeria or Africa have problems that they need a different perspective on. This is such a platform. It is also no longer business as usual. I think one of the best things about Anambra State and about His Excellency, whom we all work for, is that we are always proactive. We are always ahead of everyone. When it was safety, when safety was an issue, Anambra has been and still is the safest state in Nigeria. Is it education? He has given you so much priority. It's given you so much priority because of the passion that His Excellency has for education. He has created two separate ministries to make sure that our youth, whom he has incredible passion for, are catered for by two of us. And so, as usual, we will not allow COVID to drag us back or to make us lag behind. In fact, instead, we are going to make sure that this challenge called COVID will bring positive resolutions to our problems. And like my sister said, we're already doing online teaching and for basic education and for tertiary education. So this platform is also very much an opportunity for us to reach out to those of you who are out there in the private sector. We continue to say that education is not the sole responsibility of the state or of the government. We need you to join hands with us, to work in collaboration with us. So come August 1, we're looking forward to welcoming you to this platform. Wherever you are, just plug in, participate in this, make it happen for our youth, because the youth of Anambra State are the youth of Nigeria, are the youth and the future for Africa. So please join us on that day to share best practices and cross-fertilization of ideas. Thank you very much. You're all welcome. Thank you very much, Nairobi for Tertiary Education. Over to our lady, I think, <laughs> as we hear your thoughts about Yes, I'm happy it's happening already live. Um, we are just a day away from the real day. We are talking about Anambra State education conference online 2020 it's just a day away first of august you see people think globally and you act locally and that is what we are doing 
a lot have been said everywhere about uh, COVID-19, especially the effect on education and schools. And we hear about it all over the world. And Anambra State, always the first. I'm happy to be from Anambra State. And I'm a consultant, um, capacity building and performance consulting. And because these things have been going around all over the world, we felt we should bring it home. And I'm happy we have somebody I admire so much, the person of the Commission of Basic Education, who always has this foresight. She has vision. When she sees it, she doesn't miss it at all. She gives it all her go. And we are happy the, her sister, um, fellow commissioner, the Commission of Tertiary Education, also bought into the, into the vision. And here we are, bringing in everybody in Anambra State. I remember I was sharing this with my friend in the USA. He said, that is really something fantastic to it. Be able to galvanize everybody in education in Anambra State. We are talking about the primary, the secondary, the tertiary, both the colleges of education, the polytechnic, the universities, not only the state uh, universities, including the federal universities and higher institutions we have in Anambra State. So my dear Ndi Anambra, it's for us. We are not just alone. We have the education, our development partners, who will be also be part of this program. And the two commissioners have actually said so much about this. There are areas I will also want to talk about. Our students, we want to focus on them also. What type of students do we want to produce? You know, when you are talking about educational policy and philosophy, you have to think about the students you want to produce. So what type of students do we want to produce henceforth? Because of the new normal, it's no longer business as usual. We talk about blended learning. So what type of students are we envisaging to produce for Anambra State? And again, she talked about ICT infrastructure. What facilities are available for them and the teachers to learn? We have people who will talk about that. And then there's this project that we want to launch during this program, the event. One student, one laptop, palm top, or Android phone. I personally would say one student, one laptop, because you learn best with laptop. And I don't know whether it's a challenge to Anambra State. We know what Anambra people can do. And like the Commissioner Teshari said, it's collaborations. We can't do it alone. The state cannot do it alone. And that is why I'm here as a consultant for us all to work together. Launch this project. We are inviting every Indian Anambra state, whether we are in Anambra state or in Lagos, Abuja, or all over the world, to key into this and see what we can do for our students. We can do it. Anambra state can do it. I remember during post when donations were coming in, Anambra people still donated about billions of naira to federal government. We are talking about our children, Anambra state children. Anambra as our governor, uh, Dr. Willie Obiano, will say it. We heard our commissioner saying, we've always said, the go we are, governor has always said, we want to give them our country and Ambra State education that is globally competitive. Without the, the, the one student, one, one laptop, how do we achieve that? So that is an area where inviting every Indian Ambra State, all our friends, UNIDO, UNESCO, UNITA, UNICEF. We need all of you. Anambra State is the first to do this. And we're always the first. We've always, the ministry has always won you know, the best awards in education in Nigeria. And everybody is saying Anambra is at it again, doing it the first one. 
So we are happy we are having this to invite everybody. Teachers, I wish you can hear my voice. This is opportunity for you. We just have to come out. We just have to key into this. We just have to do that together. It's for you and the students you are teaching. Bring your students you are teaching to be part of this program. It's opportunity for you without the commissioner being there or the PPSSC chairman or Asubed. It's opportunity for you to air your views. How do you want it henceforth? So we invite everybody, both tertiary students. The package on Saturday is robust. It touches across every sector of education. So we invite all and we ask the press to please give it the most positive publicity so that we get people all over the world to key into the program. We are thinking globally and acting locally. That is what we are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Ma, for that wonderful um, statement that you made. And I believe the members of the press actually have questions for our organizers. Please, I will urge every one of us that have questions. Just make it short and brief so we won't take much of our time. Thank you very much. for your question. Um, let me say that uh, this conference is free, totally free. Um, we've had some people sponsoring us uh, in terms of supporting what we are doing, either in cash or in kind. Um, we have well-meaning people who are giving their widows might, might, not the T-I-E, it is the M-I-G-H-T, because They've done very big things for us. 
um, no matter um, what the challenges are, I'm sure we are going to surmount them and they come out very good on Saturday. Um, we are expecting that all our teachers must register for this conference. Unfortunately, I understand that some of them, in fact, a huge number of them, do not have Android phones or laptops to key in. But I want the audience, I want people to tell me what kind of education are we now expecting? If we have teachers who are ICT illiterates, if we have teachers who do not even have Android phone, not because they cannot afford it, but because they have not made it their priority. I usually give an example with doctors, for example. I don't see any doctor when he graduates that you go to my status group or the speedometer or the whatever for him to or her to, to go to work. They, in fact, it's their pride, it's their pride to put on the status quo and be doing their head like this and moving about. It's their pride to carry their bag. They are proud to carry their bag, their bag that contains their speedometer and every other thing they need. And you see them proudly working as doctors. I have a dream. That dream is when teachers, a time will come, when teachers will be proud to be teachers. A time will come, when teachers will be proud to carry their laptops and move about because they are proud to be teachers. <coughs> a time will come, that's my dream. A yes, time will so. come when the teachers will see that technology is the way to go. Yes. I've always said it all the time, that technology may not replace teachers. But teachers who use technology will definitely replace those who do not. That's my dream. And it will happen. You know, <coughs> that dream must happen. Because I'm looking for the time when the teachers will know that this is no longer the time for Akabeke, Wedita, Ewefe, Gola, Aosa, Ibaji. That's no longer the time. This is the time for creativity. This is the time for flipped classroom. This is the time when teachers will realize that remote learning and teaching is also the way to go. This is the time when teachers will have to realize that technology, like my sister said, is the way to go. I have a dream, and that dream will be when teachers will be proud and hold their hands tall, and know that they can beat their chest, that they're going to stand tall in any community to talk. I tell my teachers, I've, I've been invited to speak to more than 36 countries of the world in, in, in Abu Dhabi. I've been invited two times to speak in Abu Dhabi. And I, I talked about 36 countries of the world represented. And beside me would be a teacher, a primary school teacher in Abu Dhabi coming to speak to us. I have, have a dream. When the, a primary school teacher, final president, would stand there before the world and talk to them. That's the dream I have. And that dream will definitely happen. And it can only happen when teachers begin to key in. When teachers will know that whatever His Excellency Chief Dr. Ulobi are not is doing for them on technology is for their well-being, is for them to have that global competitiveness. It is for them to realize that whatever we think out in the education family, and most times I use myself as an example, I taught in the secondary school for 10 good years, and I loved that as, as a principal at three. That's a vice principal. Today I'm a professor. And you can't hold it. You can't hold it against me. I've worked out for it. I'm looking forward to a time when the teachers of Anambra State, we know that it pays for them to develop themselves. And I tell people, I've invested in myself and I can hold my head high. I know that I've invested in myself. I'm looking forward to that time when the teachers will begin to invest in themselves. When they are no longer contented to just keep going round and round and round without knowing where they're going to. And that is why we are doing this conference. We have said that it is compulsory. Unfortunately, they don't have Android phones. And they, when we begin to say that it's important that, and it is a must for every teacher to have an Android phone, because Android phone is no longer a sign of status. It's not a status symbol anymore. It is now a tool for education and learning. I was reading a cartoon somewhere. 
and the and the child said they told us not to come to school with phone. Now they have put school into phone. So what are we going to do about that? You see, things are changing. The new normal has made it imperative that every child must have an Android phone. Every teacher must have an Android phone. Because if you if you if you do not have that, we are not we are, we are definitely going to be left behind. How are you going to teach your students? How are you going to impact on them? How are you going to join in these conferences like this? So I'm talking to teachers if they are listening to me. This is also, my, like my sister said, a wake-up call. Let us do the needful and make sure that we are part of this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Over to you. Yeah. I think the best we let him get all the questions. We sleep here today. You we know, should just, you know, just ask all the questions. They won't stop asking. The technology for the conference, yes. right? Yeah, I want to let everyone know that this will be a streamlined. We want to let everyone know that this conference will be streamlined on various channels YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And uh, we know that it's an online program. They're expected to be at home and then log in. We've already sent out the login details to register, even to look at the website and see the wide array, the number of events we have packaged for this program. So we've already sent them out, and we've already sent out the, the channel's um, login details, the links to you know, log to the live events. So they are all there already. And uh, many of our speakers, of course, will be speaking from their, from their locations. This is the venue where the live stream will take place. And uh, we've done what we could do as human beings. We are still have a, a day away to all tie up all the knots. We know we're in Africa. Um, uh, the, the, of course, um, uh, we are hoping to enjoy weather clemency and everything will be under control. So we thank God for that. <coughs> and for our prof has said about the teachers, you know, it's like, you know, um, the, the doctors carrying their stethoscope. And I just was yesterday, when I was thinking about this program, I said, come, come to think about that. When we were young going to school, what were we using? Slate, right? Every student must go to school with slate. That was the start of the simple then. So are we talking about slate now? What are we talking about? Laptops. And this is to our parents. Just like when in those days they went to school and their parents bought slates because you must have slates to go to school. We are in the new norm. And what is now detecting that every child has to have either laptop or laptop or Android phone. In fact, for me, the laptop replaces the slate of those days. I wish every parent bought for his or her child. So it's not only for government, it's not only for community members, but parents to begin to know that the new normal has come to stay. And the education, like the child said, is now inside those phones we never wanted them to carry about before. So this is something that we want everybody to carry home. If you are in any union, your own owner, everywhere you are, to help to begin to enlighten our parents wherever you are, enlighten them. That laptop has become slaves of those days. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here and for your patience. Um, let me start by saying that Anambra has been taking the lead for tertiary education awards, even for basic education awards. 
last year your youth won the best, isn't it, the best um, technology um, award internationally. For our tertiary education, Anambra State won the first position for an international ICT e-government implementation. We're also second runner up in the ICT infrastructural development. Then at the presidential level, Anambra State also won second position in Young Scientists Presidential Award. In 2019, the ICT um, Award for e-government implementation was in 2018. These are recent awards. We also got second position for human resource development. Now, what has this given impact? What impact has this given to our schools? Last two, three weeks, I have been going the rounds with my team. We went to Odume Jojiku University. They have invented amazing products. They have invented, organically invented, to use your word, products that will help to sanitize COVID that will help to cleanse the problem that COVID is creating. They have created all kinds of innovative products. And so we began a program to empower the youth. In Anse Poly, you know, um, Polytechnic, they've also created a lot of things. Now, what are we doing now? During this COVID period, we began a an IGR agriculture revolution. It's also part of ICT because you can market your products on the e-commerce platform. And so we launched IGR campaign with Anspoli Polytechnic two weeks ago. And the question there is how will people support them? Now, e-learning is also something we're doing, both for my sister's ministry and in tertiary education. As we speak now, our students are online, studying online. It is no longer business as usual. Like I said earlier, we cannot do this alone. So we say that we need our students to have Android phones and our teachers. It is a very serious wake up call on the private sector. In Lagos, where I spent most of my career, we launched St. Augustine University. Femi Otedola showed up and said, I will pay for the whole science and technology department. And he built it and delivered the money. We started the one of um, the education, the laboratories, and the library, and everything. And uh, Aliko Dangote came and said, I will take this whole section, and I'll pay for it. And so it goes on for all the other departments. And so you'll see that even our Hans Poli, His Excellency graduated this uh, institution that was an agricultural institute for over 30 years into a polytechnic. And how did that happen? Is through all these certifications that they have, upgrading themselves from being just an agric university to a proper polytechnic. But Anambra State has most incredible um, resource of deep pockets. We have the have-nots. We have those who can afford to get 10 Androids, 10 laptops. What are you that can afford 10 laptops and 10 Androids going to do about our students and our teachers who cannot afford to have an iPhone or to have a, an, any Android phone? That is the question this platform will address. How will the haves provide for the have-nots? How will those in the rural community you see, the, the maxim continues that in the midst of chaos and problem lies opportunity. That is the opportunity this conference is creating. This is the opportunity that His Excellency has created in making us proactive. And Ambra is still number one. We have to take proactive. So we're leading the whole Southeast when it comes to health. Our health commissioner has left no stone unturned in making sure that Anambra students, Anambra hotels, Anambra indiges will be freed and protected from COVID. So now education is the place to be. What are you going to do to help those who do not have? Thank you. My name is Titus.
This is a very good intervention for the system. But the government is thinking for the community teacher for what you need. We can't hear you. Okay, just like uh, uh, for this commercial for special things. Because we are covered in special work in three years. We can't hear you. Speak up. So now the man cover like this. Yeah. I said, Lagos, we are covered in education for 15 of more than three years. There was a time, so so the deputy governor took over a system where they make some organization to adopt private schools. Within those periods, some of the schools in Lagos become a part of the That's not my question. My question now is, you strongly said most of the teachers do not have language. And I do that now. My question is, given the lack of android among these teachers, I would like to know how many people were able to be recorded for this innovative program called the school. That's my simple question. How many people have registered? Yes, how many people have registered for this innovative program? Mm -hmm. so, well, let me say that uh, as we've had more than over 2,000 registered already, remember that the, the day is not just gone? I mean by yesterday, man. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So, um, and more people are registering. And um, why are we saying, why have we said more people are registered? Because I know that by today more people have registered. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow more people will register. And uh, by tonight, when they listen to what we are saying, and people that are listening to us now, when they've seen what we, are, what we are saying, more people will also register. And let me tell you, the target is not merely the teachers. Um, we talk mostly about the teachers because, I mean, it's all around education, isn't it? It's also for people who can contribute to what we are doing. It's also for the students who will learn a thing or two. It's for the business person who will know how to, you know, put his, his, his uh, uh, what do you say, his money in the right place. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, we have a policy. We have a policy, what you call adopt a school policy. And yes, in this state, we have that. And a lot of people are already adopting schools. <laughs> if you come on the 7th of August, I want you to come to um, Akweze, you know, we are a philanthropist that uh, is turning this community school there into something we don't begin to imagine. Uh, you wouldn't believe that that school is a, a, a public school, you see? So, someone has thought that if you go to Isu of your work process, you could adopt a primary school and it's turning that thing uh, into that school into another, uh, another kind of effort, you know? So, we have a lot of philanthropists. Well, Maybe not as many as you would expect, mm -hmm. who have adopted schools and trying to put in things for them. Uh, because uh, le leadership, what is leadership if you cannot influence? If you cannot influence people to, to support what the government is doing, then that our leadership uh, may be wanting. So more and more people will certainly come in. And uh, we are hoping that uh, um, when I talk about that, I talk about teachers, really, so we're not even talking about the other people who have registered. So um, parents also should join. Um, the what about the community leaders should join because education is not some. I've never seen anywhere in the world where education is left only to the government. No, no. Tell me, there's no place in the world. And is education that should make the child of a poor person to eat and dine with the king. Therefore, everybody should be interested. And if everyone is interested, what it means is that. What we should register for this conference and join in contributing to, you know, what is happening in this conference. Okay. I don't know if any other person has a question. Before I can ask mine. Okay, let me ask mine. Um, I'm glad to hear that a whole lot has been put in place for this conference. But I want to know, after this conference, what next? Are we going to stop at this conference? Or is it going to be a continuous process? And how sure are we that all these things, one child, one laptop, are going to be put in place after the conference is over? That's post COVID in education in Nigeria. And I'm proud. <laughs> we don't intend to stop here, certainly, but you can, you can talk about Actually, it. Actually, we have already lined up for the next program, a follow up program to this. 
Um, we know technology is the way to go, like uh, Honorable Commissioner of Tertiary Education has said. What we package cut across both the community, the teachers, the students, and then at the end of the day, technology is at the center of it. So after this, pro this particular event, we already have a follow-up, and that follow-up will center more on technology. So we'll take it further, deeper. And then the one project, one student, of course. Ah, I don't know why she hasn't shown the package here. Okay. Yeah. That's... Okay. Yes. Yes. And you... Yeah, so that's, you know, something. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. we still have a long way to go. When all the Anambra State Philanthropies have answered us, then to put this into the hand of every child in the state and parents respond to the call to replace late with this, and then will continue. It's, not, it's just a continuous process. And then teachers knowing that there's no more to sit behind again. They must come forward. So there's a lot. We have a lot planned out immediately after this. We'll call you back for another one very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please uh, let's appreciate them. <laughs> it's not easy. They actually do what they do. And 